Way back on January 10th, 2019, I put out a video where I made this crayon inlaid coffee table. Actually, it was the first video that I put out this year. So it only seemed fitting that I'd make my last video of the year be another crayon inlaid coffee table. Now, I wanted to make sure that I did a very different design so that I could make it, hopefully, another interesting video, but we'll get into all of that as it comes together. For now, let's just get the building. So after I'd finished breaking all of my boards of walnut into chunks that are a little bit closer to their finished sizes, I used my joiner and planer to get all the boards perfectly flat and to even thicknesses. Thick night? Anyway, and after that was done, I used my table saw to rip the boards to their finished widths and then glued them up into what'll become my tabletop. Now, while that's setting up overnight, we could turn our attention to the base. And again here I started by ripping my boards into a few strips, so that I ended up with a bunch of pieces that are an inch and a half thick and two inches wide, by however long. And that's because we're going to cut them to length in a minute. And actually, that's what you see me figuring out in this shot here. And actually, while I'm doing that, let's cut to an animation that goes over the design so that you have a better idea of what I'm doing moving forward. So the first crayon tables that I made were much more organic with a sort of flowing river inlay. For this one though, I decided to make the pattern a lot more geometric and purposeful. Basically, I connected a line from corner to corner and then made more lines spaced evenly at the same angle. So for the base, I wanted to do something to keep that theme going. So I started off by making a long subassembly that will run the diagonal of the table to match that line. And this will be made up of two verticals with 15 degree cuts on either end in the shape of a parallelogram to give it that lean that I wanted, and then two horizontals with 15 degree cuts on either end in the shape of a trapezoid to connect the verticals. Then I made two more assemblies with the exact same vertical pieces and horizontal pieces with a 15 degree cut on one end and left long on the other. And that's so that I could lop these ends off at what ended up being 63.4 degrees or something weird. But in any case, an appropriate angle where it would result in a leg that comes from the corner at 45 degrees. Okay, now let's do it in real life. So here I'm using my Rockler crosscut sled to break my subassembly pieces down into individual pieces. All still too long at this point. Then I'm actually going to rip them one more time on the table saw, barely removing any material. Just a little kiss. And that's just to make sure that things are good and clean and straight before I start cutting any angles. Next I set the fence on my crosscut sled to 15 degrees and locked it down. And I don't want to touch this again until after I've cut the angles on every piece. That way they're all going to end up consistent. And then I could start working my way through all the cuts, just like we talked about in the animation.
Okay, now with the subassembly set up, let's go back to the tabletop and start working on the crayon stuff. So the first step there was to finalize the size of the top. So I took one of my large woodpecker squares and clamped it to the edge of my top and then referenced my track saw against that to ensure that I'd make a cut that was perfectly at 90 degrees. Before I did that though, I tilted my plunge saw to 15 degrees and that's so that I can create a back bevel on the underside and then I can make the cut. Once I'd done this on each end, I used my table saw to make 15 degree cuts along the long ends. With the tabletop size finalized, I marked out a line that was an inch and a half in from each edge. And this was a guide to show me the edge of where I wanted my crayon grooves to end. After the crayon had fully cooled off, the next step was to seal it in epoxy. Now the first time that I did this, it came out pretty good, but I wasn't 100% satisfied with the result. So this time I decided to use Total Boat Thick Set, which is specifically made for doing deeper pours. But my reasoning for using it was, I think that it generates less heat, or at least gets up to its max heat more slowly when curing, and to my eye, it also just is the clearest option. So after I had it good and mixed, I poured it in pretty liberally. And after I had poured it, honestly there weren't any air bubbles that I could see, but since I had just bought a torch, and because they look cool lighting in slow motion, I decided that I'd hit the surface real quick, just to be extra safe that if there were any air bubbles, they'll be removed before the stuff hardens. Okay, so after about a day and a half, the epoxy was finally hard enough that I could start sanding it down and polishing it. And this took quite a while to do, even with some pretty aggressive sanding. In fact, while I was sanding it, I was even thinking about alternative tools or methods that I could use to get the job done faster. I thought about using a hand plane, a blowtorch, a card scraper. Heck, I even thought about using a shaving razor. And if I did use a shaving razor, you know what brand I would trust to shave my epoxy? The same one I'd trust to shave my face, Dollar Shave Club. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, but Chris, you have a beard, or at least stubble anyway. You don't shave. But having a beard, or stubble, doesn't mean not shaving. I still shave about twice a week to keep everything looking clean. See, here's proof. No CGI there. And here's what my beard looks like when I don't shave for a week compared to what it looks like after I clean it up. Makes a big difference. So here are my two tips for my similarly bearded brethren. One, don't make the mistake of establishing a line here. Instead, aim for right where your neck transitions from vertical to horizontal. I think that's a more natural look. And two, save time and money by getting your shaving needs delivered right to your door with Dollar Shave Club. In fact, you can have all of your grooming needs delivered. Shampoo, face cleanser, body cleanser, even toothbrushes and toothpaste. And most importantly, all of your shaving essentials. So for a limited time, new members get their first month of the executive razor with a tube of their Dr. Carver's shave butter for only 5 bucks. After that, the restock box ships regular-sized products at regular price. 
Just go to dollarshaveclub.com slash four eyes to get your first starter set for only five bucks, or better yet, click the link in the description. And all joking aside, it really is a useful service, their stuff's top quality, and I genuinely think if you're a person who shaves, you'll be happy with Dollar Shave Club. Plus, by supporting my sponsors, it helps to support my channel. So thank you for your consideration, and thank you Dollar Shave Club for your support. So after I'd removed all of the epoxy that spilled over the top and got everything nice and flat, I did a lot of sanding. Now normally I would just go up to about 220 for a tabletop, but because here I really wanted that epoxy to be nice and clear, I continued on past that all the way up to 4000 grit, and then even used some compound and polish to really get it to shine. And I will say, this seems to be the clearest epoxy pour that I've ever done. I'm really happy with the result, and it's definitely what I'm going to do again moving forward. Now let's move back over to the base and finish that off. So when we left off we had three sub-assemblies, and the next thing that we had to do was cut the weird angle off of the smaller sub-assemblies to form the 45 degree angle that I want under the tabletop. And I know that sounds weird, so just rewind back to the animation if you need a refresher. I'll wait. Good? Okay. So the first thing that I did was mark out how long I needed the sub-assemblies to be, then I could mark out the exact angle my cut would be. And this is all just to help me line the piece up when I go to make the cut on a sled in a minute. You'll see. Also, whenever I'm cutting angles, I like to make a little mark that shows me what direction the angle is going to be, just so that I don't get confused as I flip things around or whatever. But look how close I made the mark to what my actual angle was supposed to be. It's not often that I impress myself, but this one got me. So now I'm going to tilt my blade to 63.4 degrees, and then lock my fence down and establish a cut line on my temporary sled. With that established, I took some scrap wood that I had made that same 15 degree cut on way back when I was first building the sub-assemblies, and used those to position the sub-assembly exactly where I wanted it to be on the line, and then I could cut. You know, like I said in the beginning of the video, it's kind of funny that I started and ended the year with a pair of crayon tables. And I promise this wasn't any kind of grand design. It just sort of worked out that way. But I'm glad that it did, because it's cool to be able to reflect or even look back at what I was doing a year ago and see how far I've come. And in doing that, I'll say that the main thing that I've noticed whoa, is whoa, that- Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? How far you've come? You're building almost the exact same thing you did a year ago. Well, I mean, yeah, they're both crayon tables, but the videos are pretty different. Are they, though? 
Let's look. Here's a nice shot of you putting crayons in color order. Where have we seen this before? How about this? Some nice close-up action of cutting the crayons out of their wrapper. That must be new, right? Nope. Same glasses, same blue rubber gloves when putting on finish. You're even wearing the exact same outfit you wore in the older video. Okay, that's just a coincidence. But you're even wearing the gloves right now. Okay, Sean, you know that I get dry skin this time of year and, and putting, putting on, on lotion, lotion in the gloves, in the gloves helps. helps. What are you doing? I'm copying you to prove that everything you do, you've already done before. You don't do anything original. Okay, okay stop. stop. That's, that's enough. enough. Serious. serious. Stop, stop it. Knock, Knock it off. off. Sean, Sean, I'm, I'm serious. serious. Meatloaf, spaghetti and gumballs. gumballs. Stop. Special thanks to Bernard Lynch, Randall Nichols, Guillermo Saldana, Ben Baker, Dennis Nestor, P.E., and the rest of my Patreon members for making these videos possible. Just like me, I hope that you guys never change. Seriously, though, thank you so much for all the support that you send my way. I truly couldn't do this without you. And if you want to learn more about how you can support the show, too, check out the Patreon link and see if it's right for you. And as always, no pressure. All right, see you in the next one.